Good morning. I'm Ray Jones, Pike County Judge Executive, and we're here for a brief press conference uh, for the purpose of updating the public on the current status of the COVID-19 pandemic in Pike County, Kentucky. Uh, we have several uh, folks here that will be uh, speaking, and uh, with, uh, without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Ms. Tammy Riley, who is the Public Health Director for the Pike County Health Department. Hello, good morning. Thank you, Judge. I need, to, need that paper, okay. Um, oh, the, the update that I want to provide is uh, to make the public aware that we, um, we are now at 87 cases. So, two new since um, I left the office yesterday afternoon. And uh, what I'm seeing is that of those 87, 25 of them are active cases. One, um, one individual is hospitalized and um, 60 have recovered. But uh, it is alarming that if you look at where we were going into Memorial Day weekend, we had um, 28 cases. We are now at 87. And what that shows is um, it's the growth rate that's concerning that uh, reflects a 68% growth in cases in just a little over a month. So that case growth is what's concerning to uh, public health. And um, additionally, what we're seeing is um, those individuals are linked to each other or they're linked to travel. Uh, that's very unfortunate that individuals are going outside the area and when you're vacationing, what the assumption that I'm gonna make is that you're relaxing, that we're all relaxing our behaviors when we're traveling um, uh, and when we're interacting with each other locally because uh, cases are being linked to other cases or when an individual um, shows positive, what we're seeing at public health is that many others, two, three, we've even had up to five individuals uh, being affected by another uh, positive case. So, you know, as public health director, I want to make you aware that we're seeing cases from the Carolinas, from Clearwater, from Florida, and um, it's, it's concerning. So, um, uh, I just wanted to make the public aware of that. I'll take questions after, uh, Judge Executive. Okay, Dr. Fadi Alacross will address the public, uh, Infectious Disease Medical Director for PIFO Medical. All right. Good morning, everybody. All right. So let me talk a little bit about the situation worldwide as well as, especially in Kentucky, and why it's important now to keep our guards on to prevent any further activity. Mrs. Riley mentioned we have increased in the growth, and this is a little bit alarming. We have no sustained low numbers. Basically, the number is going up. We see a sleep upward trajectory now in the cases of COVID-19, and this is what, does, we, this is, we don't want to see that. We need to sustain life, we need to resume life, and we need to do what's best for the community. So our goal is to provide you with knowledge to do your part, and we need to do what's best for the community. But let me briefly, briefly co uh, go over the situation worldwide. So global COVID cases have passed the 10 million mark as per yesterday, and we have dangerous resurgence of the disease is mounting in several counties and several states here in the United States. If you look at the number recently, 29 of the 50 states have the highest number so far, and this is again like alarming. And this is all related to opening up communities and putting down all the restricting, restriction policies and allowing basically more mingling and more uh, travel and more communication. All these definitely will create an opportunity for the virus to create more infection. And again, this is not our intention. Apparently, leapfrogging the recommended checklist in each phase of reopening was not the right move. Anytime you rush that decision to try to jumpstart the stricken economy, we know we have some issues. We have that economy been affected big time, and we don't want that. We need to reestablish the economy. We need to move forward. But to be able to do that, we need to do our part as well. We need to follow restriction measures to be able to sustain life, sustain reopening, keep our county healthy, the country healthy, and again, this is what we need. Ironically, COVID-19 was not able to come to Eastern Kentucky, 
So we decided to chase the virus on the beaches, especially in the Carolinas and Florida, and bring it back to our community. And again, we don't want that. We need to have fun in the summer. We need to pick the lowest risk activities. We don't want to bring the activity here to our area because we have a lot of people with coexisting comorbidities and we don't want to affect them. COVID-19 is a big deal. It is a, it is a true story. It is going to linger around for quite a bit of time. So travel to hot spots, mainly Florida and the Carolinas, is fueling our cases here in Pike County. And again, we don't want that. We need to have fun, but we need to do what's best for us and for our best for our community. And again, we need to keep the five C's, the restriction policies. We need to continue to wash hands, keep the social separation, six foot physical separation on land as well in water. And we need to have some sort of masking. Masking is a great tool to protect the others from you. And I'm going to talk about it. This is an act of strength. This is not an act of weakness because this is the only way you can create that physical separation and physical barrier to prevent expelling all the infected secretion in the environment. And we've been using in the healthcare system for a long time. For the flu, it seems to be very effective. For other viruses, it's a very effective tool. That's what we do in the operating room. We put our mask, we put our gears to protect you from catching infections. So this is definitely applies in the community as well. The growth of the new cases over the last two weeks in Kentucky is disturbing. And if you look at the numbers, we have over 2,500 new cases over the last two weeks. And this is basically 16% of all the cases in Kentucky. So as per yesterday, in Kentucky, we have over 15,000 cases with, unfortunately, 560 Kentuckians died because of the infection. And this will put the mortality rate above, like, around 3.6%, and nationally, around 5%. And this is by far much higher than the flu infection. So in Pike County, we have now 87. More of, like, majority of them over the weekend are related to each other and to travel. And unfortunately, we've seen some sick patients now because of the travel. So again, we need to have fun, we need to sustain life, but we need to keep pushing for one message, the five C's. Five C's are very helpful to protect the community. On June 24th, Kentucky published a guideline on how to reopen schools safely. And yesterday, we know that we opened the 50 people gathering and lower. We have the bars, public swimming, venues, event spaces, and assisted living facilities have currently opened the doors for customers and visitors, and soon, we're going to allow to open nursing home facilities. So if we cannot protect these people, if we cannot bubble them and shelter them, we're going to create another problems because we know that 50% of our mortality here in Kentucky is coming from the nursing home facilities and from, from the vulnerable people. So the Pike County Task Force is working tirelessly to address all the challenges planted by COVID-19. And again, one more time, our top priority is your safety. That's why we're here today. We need to increase awareness about it, and we need to comply with the five C's. Calm, cover your nose and, and, and face when you cough and sneeze, and cover them also in public. This is important. You need to clean your hands and contain when you're sick. All these mitigation policies are very helpful to contain the spread and to sustain the number of cases in, in our area as well as in the community and in the nation. We are working very hard to prevent any lockdown or any rollback. This is not, we, just, we don't want that. We need to keep moving. So please take all these necessary steps to protect yourself, your loved one, and your family, and most important, our community. There is not such thing called zero risk, and this is totally up to you and in your hands. So your choices and action will impact the entire community so please practice your societal duty and pick the right option for you and for the community. So we are in this together, and only together we can defeat the invisible virus and the pandemic. So together we can be healthy here at Pike County. And we need to continue to follow the guidelines by the health, health department. So there is still work to be done, and we have too many obligations that we have to, to follow. We need to keep our area safe. And I pray for all of you to may stay healthy, and I pray for you, for all of us, to get through that crisis, hopefully, very shortly. Thank you, Judge. At this time, uh, Mayor uh, Mike Taylor from Elkhorn City. Mike, you have a few things you'd like to say or address? Thank you. 
I can't ask people enough to wear a mask. And I know it's hard wearing them, but it's like an Elkhorn City and him mentioned about the nursing homes. You know, these people have to work there. They got to go into stores to shop. Their nurses, their aides, and whatever that is, and they bring it back to the nursing home, it'll be the end of them. So I, I ask people and beg you to wear a mask. It, it ain't that hard to wear when you go inside of a store or business. And when you're inside your vehicle, you don't have to wear it, but make sure, and I know we can't be make you wear it, but I've asked people to wear them. And listen, every time you get a chance, pray to for God to take this virus away from us. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, at this time, I'd like to ask Pikeville City Manager uh, Philip Ellswick if he would come up. Thank you, Judge. Uh, you know, this, this situation is certainly dynamic, and the city government is certainly staying abreast of the, uh, the situation and the changes. Every year we have a number of events that are scheduled in our downtown area, uh, and we are still planning those in coordination with the health department and following Governor Bashir's guidance. We ask that you just be patient because, because, because this is dynamic, it changes rapidly, and we may have to make last minute decisions uh, to change our plans. Because we take this so seriously, um, we have canceled our Main Street Live event that was scheduled for July the 3rd. Uh, and we are continuing to have our fireworks event on the 4th, but we encourage everyone to stay in your vehicles, to gather only in household units, to maintain social distance between you and other uh, parties. And then finally, if you are sick, please don't come uh, to see the fireworks. Uh, they will be uh, live streamed on our YouTube channel. We encourage you to watch them there. You know, finally, to, to demonstrate the importance of this, uh, we have instituted a new travel policy for city staff that we are encouraging them, really asking them, not to visit areas where the virus is spreading rapidly or spiking. Uh, you know, returning from those trips, they'll be asked to telework uh, and stay away from City Hall. We have a duty as public servants to protect the public and serve the public. You know, we provide police, fire, and ambulance service. Uh, we can't do that if we, if we have someone that's infected with this virus and, and takes out a number of our staff members. So we are, we're taking it very seriously. Uh, we are taking steps internally to, to protect the public and our staff. So in closing, I just ask that you please follow public health uh, experts' guidance and, and their directives. Uh, wear your mask, if not for yourself, for your neighbors. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Uh, just briefly, on behalf of the Pike County Fiscal Court, I want to give an update on where we are in terms of government services. Uh, the road department is uh, working every day. Uh, the solid waste crews are out working every day. Uh, we have had at least one individual call and advise uh, the solid waste department that she was uh, COVID positive. Her husband was COVID positive and hospitalized and just reminding our employees to take extra precaution when we pick their garbage up. Uh, the courthouse has reopened. Uh, there's a process when you come in, you don't have to wait outside. If it's where there'll be places on the floor marked to maintain social distancing, you are asked to wear a mask. Uh, under the guidelines of the CDC, you do have to give your temperature. Some people are upset about that. Um, we're doing this to make sure that we're protecting the public and our workforce. We have not had a Pike County Fiscal Court employee, uh, uh, anyone from the jail or the Sheriff's Department test positive for COVID-19. And we want to keep it that way. We want to keep it out of our jail. We want to keep it out of our workforce because it not only protects our workforce, but it's a matter of protecting the public. As Tammy said, as Dr. Foddy said, we have people who are going to Myrtle Beach and other places. And some of the cases that we've seen are people who've contracted the virus in Florida and South Carolina, and then they're bringing it back here. And in my conversations with Ms. Riley, it appears that those pa patients are much more symptomatic than the folks who are um, who, who have been tested po been testing positive here. Now today and tomorrow and Thursday, they will be doing free COVID-19 screening at Shelby Valley High School. And you can go to, I think it's mylittleclinic.com. This is through Kroger. Uh, it was coordinated. Rocky Atkins from the governor's office called me this week. Uh, we have been promoting this from our emergency management office. Uh, so if you can go to the Kroger testing website, mylittleclinic.com, 
Uh, you have to schedule the testing on there, but it is free. We encourage people to take the test. It gives Dr. Foddy and other health care providers and our health department additional information so that we can track the spread of this disease. It is real. There are a lot of people who still think it's a hoax, it, that, that, that thinks it's not a threat to, uh, to us here. Uh, a lot of people question the number of deaths. Well, whether it's 125,000 or it's 100,000 or 85,000, just think about how alarming those numbers are. Uh, at 125,000, uh, you're more than twice the population of Pike County uh, will have died just in the United States alone. And it's going up every day. Uh, we've heard some people talk about a second, a second wave or a second phase. I'm not sure, and maybe Dr. Foddy could address this or Tammy, I'm not sure we're out of the first phase because if you look at Italy, Italy and some of these other countries, when it spiked and it goes almost back down to zero, well, we spiked and it came down and plateaued and now it's going back up again. So um, we never saw the end of the, the bottom of the curve like they saw in Italy and some of the other countries. And it really is alarming that the most pros prosperous country uh, uh, in the world, uh, the most technologically advanced, the most uh, advanced scientific and medical communities, has the largest number of COVID cases of any country uh, and the largest number of deaths. And we need to all do our part to make sure uh, that we don't have this disease ravage our community. And when you see a 68% increase in cases since Memorial Day, and we're not even to the 1st of July yet, it is pretty scary. So um, as a husband of a health care provider, uh, you know, I know that she's concerned. I know that uh, every health care provider that's on the front lines uh, when people aren't adhering to the guidelines, they're not wearing masks and social distancing, you're placing their lives in, in jeopardy as well. And doctor, we appreciate everything you've done to help keep the people of Pike County safe and is much appreciated. So at this time, we'll turn it over to questions. Um, Mr. Vanderbeck. Right, uh, other states have uh, mandated a, uh, a, a required mask to enter into uh, facilities, public facilities, grocery stores, so on and so forth. Do you think that the county should at this point do that? And also uh, states like uh, New York, New Jersey have said that if you uh, come in, up from Florida, South Carolina, you have to automatically quarantine before you go out. Would, would that be something that, that my county should do? Jeff, it's been something that, uh, that has been brought up to us at this point in time. I don't want to have to issue an executive order. And just to be quite candid, we've issued executive orders over, you know, congregating. We've issued executive orders on stores in terms of one person per shopping cart. People aren't adhering to those. And, you know, we can issue an executive order to require masks. I could do that. The governor could do that. But if people aren't going to adhere to those guidelines and those executive orders, we really don't have any way to police them. Uh, that would be, a, in my opinion, a... Um, a, a step that will be taken down the road, but obviously if you look at what's taking place in Florida and Texas, when you have hospitals in Houston and throughout Florida, their ICUs are full. And that's what we talked about. We didn't want to see happen here, and we've been able to avoid that. But when you have people going to those places where, uh, you know, Myrtle Beach, for instance, and they're coming back here, they're going to Florida, and they're going out on the beach. I mean, you know, you have Republican governors in both Texas and Florida, and now, you know, they've shut the beaches down in Florida. They've you know, shut bars down again. Uh, they've stopped elective surgeries in Texas, uh, Governor Abbott, because of the number of COVID cases. Uh, you know, it, that would have an absolute catastrophic impact on our community as we try to reopen businesses. Um, there are a lot of businesses that aren't going to be able to make it. Uh, a lot of businesses are on, you know, are, are teetering on whether they can recover from this. And if we as a community don't adhere to these guidelines, it could be catastrophic, not only, only from a public health standpoint, but from an economic standpoint. That's a great question because let's go back a little bit about why it's important to test. 
And I'm going to basically answer that question based on that. So the more you test, the more you find. And I know although that information will create fear mongering, however, that piece of information is crucial to resume life and sustain life. Because if I test more, I find the positive, I can isolate them, I can trace the contact, I can quarantine them, and this is how you contain the infection in the community. And by doing this, you'll be able to cut down on the spread to the vulnerable one and prevent them from coming to the hospital. But go back to your point, basically, to go from one phase to another phase, you need to go over the checklist to make sure that you've done everything possible and prevent any leapfrogging. Anytime you jump from one to another one prematurely, you're not ascertaining the safety of the first phase, and that's why you're rushing to the second phase. Now, anytime we're talking about lockdown or rollback, we, are, we have to look at the number of hospitalization and number of ICU surge and capacity. Because again, going back to the point, the hospital sustainability is the ultimate goal. And here I'm talking to the public. If you don't want to put off your care, you have to do exactly what we're asking you for. Because if we're going to fill the hospital with COVID-19, what's going to happen? We're going to cut down on the elective surgeries, on elective visitation, and this is not healthy because people are, especially cancer patients, are going to basically be affected big time by not going to see, see their, their, their physician in the hospital and taking the right care. So we don't want to hold off on any care. At this point, we've seen last week four cases. They've done very well, and they're completely discharged from the hospital. At this point, I don't see anybody this week. However, the incubation period of the virus may take up to 14 days. So I don't know what's going to happen in the next two weeks. Are we going to see more cases in the next two weeks? It's going to basically be subject to time to tell me if they're going to see more patient coming for severe infection to the hospital, or I'm going to have more ICU patients with COVID-19. But again, the key here, the number of hospitalization and mainly the number of patients in the ICU will impact and will gauge the rollback and the lockdown. Follow-up question. At this time, you had a, a good point. At this time, can you confirm the measures that, let's say, Pike Medical Center is taking to ensure that uh, uh, patient safety coming in for elective thing, and, and can you also confirm that the people who should be coming to the hospital for regular checkups or to their doctors for regular checkups, that there is a safety uh, uh, checkpoint involved that PMC has taken or any hospitals? Uh, I, again, the safety is our game. So that's what we do at Pike for Medical Center, even ARH and everywhere here in the area. So we are pushing the right message that we are safe and healthy at Pikeview Medical Center. And we've been doing this in day number one, from social distancing, from temperature check, from screening policies, from testing even before elective surgeries. So PMC is absolutely a safe place to receive the care. It's much more riskier to go to supermarkets and to stores than come to Pikeview Medical Center. And the problem here during the COVID-19, a lot of people like held their care because of the COVID situation. This is not, it shouldn't be this way. PMC is absolutely a safe place to receive your care. I'm talking about PMC because I am PMC positive, pro for that, and that's why I have to advocate for that. And PMC absolutely following all the recommendations by the state and by the local health department to keep everybody safe, including visitors, employees, and more, most importantly, our patients. Yes, sir. I think in Kentucky we've done a great job. The problem is not the problem with Kentucky. The problem is anytime you open up communities and you open up travel and you go to hot spots, this is how you bring the infection to our area. That's why I said, ironically, we don't have the infection here. What we've done, we are chasing the virus on the beaches and bring it back to our community. So from all the standards and all the measures in Kentucky, we are leading by example. And Kentucky is still doing much better compared to other states. Even the positive test percentage, was, we're around 3% to 4%. Here in, in Pike County, we're still around 1%. And this is wonderful. We need to keep it less, five, less than 5% and ideally less than 3%. And here we are doing a great job. But if we're going to basically put our guards down, and keep basically moving from community to another community and, and not follow the restriction policies. What are we going to do? We're going to bring the infection here to our area. And we have tons of people who are very vulnerable to this infection. We don't want that. So from Kentucky standpoint, from Pike County standpoint, we've done great. But we don't want that kind of sort of travel and risky activity to bring the infection here to our area. You mentioned the beaches a couple of times. 
Uh, what, what is it about the, uh, I guess, about the beaches uh, that, that causes that to keep coming up? Is, is it just overcrowding there, or is it folks that go on a beach vacation and go out to eat somewhere? And, it's, it, it is the whole situation. When you travel, you're going to basically be in contact with plenty of people. You tell me you're on the beach and you're isolated, it doesn't work. You're on public beach. And it's very hard on public beach to sustain the six foot physical separation. You're going to basically buy some food. You can get some drink. And again, any time I said about bringing alcohol to the picture, especially on the bar area, you're not going to be aware of following the the all restriction measures. So definitely alcohol can play a role. Number two, being in public place by itself in class proximity to others, this is definitely will create a, an opportunity for the virus to find you. So you're not finding the virus, the virus, the virus is finding you, unfortunately. Um, I have a question about the Tennessee Bureau of Alcohol and Tobacco Control. Um, they have a The, the, the top hot spots now in the United States are Arizona, Texas, and Florida. And if you look at the number around the whole United States, 25 probably state they have their top numbers, even 29, they have the top numbers basically of cases of COVID-19. Let's go back to the physiology and the basics of COVID-19. It's about the time, the place, the people, and the activity of the infection. So if I'm going to be in close proximity to somebody within six foot distance, and that person has the infection, and I'm going to spend more time with that person in an area when they have tons of activity, what I'm doing. So I'm definitely increasing my chance and my risk to capture the infection and bring it back home. So here I'm not discriminating any states. I'm talking any state, but here I'm talking from the studies we've done. We've seen the people here from our area going to these places. But here I have to talk in general. Anytime you do any sort of activities, regardless of the place, pick the right place and try to do the minimal riskier activities that can prevent you from catching the infection and bring it back home. Dr. Claudia, yes, sir. As, Kentucky, as Kentucky continues its, its reopening, um, obviously youth sports have been allowed to restart. Uh, lit leagues have started to congregate and have games again. Um, is that a major concern of yours? Uh, do you feel like those activities uh, are going to lead to more infections? And how do you feel about those activities restarting along with the, uh, the restrictions on, you know, for 50 people or less being uh, relaxed. How do you feel about all that? So if we keep our activity here in our area less than 3%, we are on the safe side to do tons of activities. So that's what I'm trying to say. Keeping our area safe, this will give you an opportunity to do anything you need, from sports to restaurant to, to gathering, to do a lot of things basically fun here in this area. The problem is the more you increase in your activity here, the more risk you are posing in the community. So I believe at this point with 1% positive test percentage, it's safe to do some sports activity with low touch. I don't think there's a problem with that. And even I put a video a few weeks ago about how safe you can pick your option during the summertime. So you can pick a lot of good options that with low risk that you can have a lot of fun with it. So I believe all is contingent on the activity of the virus in this area. And that's why I keep pushing forward. Testing, testing, testing is extremely important. And this is going to be the foundation to contain the virus and to be able to gauge the pace of moving from one phase of life to another phase of life. Hopefully, we have the vaccine very soon. Because it seems this is going to be the only ultimate response and answer for the COVID-19. Any other questions? I have a, have a question for you, Red. Uh, can you talk about potentially how close we are to maybe more restrictions being added? I know you mentioned a moment ago that restrictions are only as good as, as people are going to follow, but specifically on like county facilities, um, places where you can place well, first of all, we've not been able to reopen our parks, community centers, and playgrounds. There's a reason for that. One is we have no way, for instance, a community center, if it's rented for half a day, 
by one family or one group and then you know another group comes in the afternoon we have no way to ensure that those facilities are adequately sanitized between uses we, we don't have the manpower we don't have the equipment to do that considering how many facilities we have parks and playgrounds are another one I had a lady message me yesterday her kids are wanting to go to one of the playgrounds well when kids are crawling around playground equipment I know how it is with my children at school you know if something goes through the school my kids usually get one of them gets it brings it home it goes through the family it's just the way it works and the problem we have is we have no way to make sure the playground equipment is cleaned and sanitized I mean if you think about the fiscal court is responsible for more than a hundred pieces of property now some of those are volunteer fire departments but senior citizen centers community centers parks playgrounds some people are upset because the uh, Phelps Courthouse and Belfry Courthouse have not reopened I want to be clear about this the administrative office of the courts has instructed Anna Pence and the circuit clerk uh, to close all branch offices that's not a decision the fiscal court made that was a decision that was made by the folks in Frankfurt uh, the county court clerk we're in the same position we don't have the manpower to have uh, branch offices open one day a week because if you have people coming into those facilities they have to be sanitized and it just doesn't make financial sense we certainly have not uh, seen the full extent of the economic uh, downturn that the, the pandemic is going to cause for the fiscal court we lost six hundred roughly six hundred thousand dollars in county road aid uh, that funds you know road work salaries for employees uh, we'll know more in July uh, we are looking we are looking at possibly contracting out uh, some mowing and, um, and other upkeep and, and sanitizing for um, the parks and playgrounds and community centers uh, we think that might be something we could recover under the cares money the COVID-19 relief money um, but right now even if we do that we're still concerned about having uh, increasing the spread I'm not sure I'm, that that position is up for reappointment. We have been in contact with Luella Allen at the at the uh, library board. Uh, if you recall, Jeff, I issued an executive order to close the libraries early on. Uh, the state allowed the libraries to reopen. I I firmly don't believe that we've seen uh, the full extent of what this virus is going to do in Pike County, and we've asked people you know to you know my belief is uh, you don't have to go to a building the church is not a building the church is Christ Church okay people think that their rights are being infringed because limits on congregating were put in place the reason they were is because of exactly what you're talking about I don't think that the fiscal court will issue any kind of orders but I think that is clearly within the purview of the health department if you have a church congregation or a business uh, or even a government agency like a library that has a an outbreak and people have potentially been exposed um, you know we want to make sure people can get back to church that churches can worship freely but um, if you go look at what took place in that situation a lot of people got sick and we just don't want to see that happen um, I don't and I, I don't think that I'm going to issue any orders relating to, to church congregations uh, but again that is within the purview of the authority of the health department to to, to address I just have a quick question for Tammy um, can you can you talk about how Right. Well, I'm going to back up and address Jeff's question, uh, Jeff Vanderbeek's about 
the library and elaborate a little bit about the Phelps branch because um, that library did close actually they closed through July 2nd and then um, shortly thereafter the uh, Pike County Library uh, contacted me and the entire county system reverted back to curbside service so they did um, they did take some action there uh, per my recommendation and uh, so your question about businesses um, yes businesses um, we've been working really hands-on with the local economy because that ultimately is a big part of why we're all here today you know the uh, the health first and foremost of Pike County citizens but also so that we don't what is happening across America doesn't happen here in eastern Kentucky you know I found out this morning Alabama Arizona uh, have uh, gone back to closing bars and restricting the restaurants more and when you look it's the entire Sun Belt from California all the way to Florida if you follow the Sun Belt through uh, Arizona Alabama Texas all the way down to Florida those states are having to go backwards and Judge Jones um, the other uh, uh, individuals here today we don't want that for Eastern Kentucky and we have such high comorbidities the outcome would be far worse for us uh, regardless but uh, to address your question Chris about local businesses uh, for the most part the uh, the business community has gone above and beyond uh, they've worked really well with public health and uh, there's of course uh, maybe a couple of exceptions but for the most part they've tried to protect their employees they've tried to protect the, the their consumer base the problem is the public you know we're giving the message the uh, the businesses are are working just extra shifts they're they're bringing in extra people to clean they've, they've taken all of the the precautions necessary and they the consumer base is coming into their stores and um, and about half are not complying like wearing our mask when we enter a building where we're going to be in close proximity to others so in addition to the travel we also have com a compliance issue from just the general public that we didn't have early on so now we're seeing the cases come in we're seeing some case growth and this is the worst time ever for people to be relaxing their behaviors so I'm, I'm very concerned but the the business community has done really well now we are going out and re-educating them on those minimum requirements then because I have seen some employees relaxing their behaviors uh, but the employers are uh, whenever I address it they they address it with the employees and um, so we've had a really good working relationship thank you if there's no other questions uh, that'll conclude the press conference and um, I'm sure Tammy and Dr. Foddy and Mayor Taylor and Mr. Elsick will be around if anybody has any questions um, after the press conference. Thank you all for being here. And uh, if there's any change in the COVID status here in Pike County, we'll have a, uh, another press conference. Again, free COVID testing at uh, Shelby Valley High School today, tomorrow and Thursday. I think it's mylittleclinic.com uh, for the Kroger testing sites to schedule a testing time. Thank you very much. Also at PMC. At PMC also. Uh, so, uh, as Dr. Fadi said, the testing is important and we encourage people to participate. Thank you all very much.